<coughs> already come forward a little. So you can come there. So you can like, look at that plate. You got very small numbers. So it's good. We can have a lot of face connect. <coughs> Right, so uh, what I'm trying to do is, I think you've heard a lot about agility in the, you, you, the last couple of days, uh, specifically on the frameworks, the patterns, the methodology. So today I'm, I'm going to look at how, how I use it in my profession, right? So what I do, uh, I'm a manager transformation business consulting for Infosys. So we do help large IT organizations and their business to transform the way they do the business. So I focus specifically around the banking and insurance area. So that's where my core competence is. So I'm a business process consultant for banking and insurance. We do help the banks and insurance in the new way of working, in the new paradigm, especially in the digital world, how they should be. And uh, because the, the differentiation between IT and uh, the processes have, have diminished a lot. 10 years back, there was a, a well-defined business process, and IT was quite automated. Nowadays, the business model in which most of these banks and insurance companies, they're discovering the business model itself. So there's nothing called a well-defined, somebody's automatic, and the entire business model itself is driven through IT. So that's a very interesting paradigm we are in. So we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we have uh, opportunity, as a virtue of my job, I have opportunity to interact with uh, many of the, the CEOs and CIOs of those banks and the uh, uh, insurance companies across the globe, and we are in a mission to help them to, to get in, get them into the next way of doing business. So that's where I come from. And agility, by the way, we used it to get the new way of working. And so that's uh, that's how the context is going to be. So this is more about um, uh, the enterprises, the challenges the enterprise uh, looks and have and feel uh, about this entire new change which is happening around us, and. It's not, it's very important to really be aware of one key aspect about the enterprise challenge is you can't have one treatment for the set of systems which they have. Right? It's, it's great to have all these uh, frameworks, patterns, processes, methodologies, and the, the treatments required and, and the, the need of outcomes required for those sets of applications are quite different. So we'll see some of those and uh, I will, it's, it's more about giving perspectives, giving views, giving some experiences. So you can take a few of them and, and then you can try it out or you can have further discussions about it. See, conferences are not to train people on anything, it's to get some spark. So you can go back and try to dwell more on it and, and see that where you want to reach. And so that's what I believe in. And um, I've been associated with um, the Agile communities from the last 10-15 uh, years. In fact, I started my journey of, I, I was a developer in Microsoft. So I got privileged to get trained on XP practices quite long back, in 2000s, right? So uh, I've been uh, uh, part of Agile India group, so we do organize one of those biggest Agile uh, event in the Asia. So we do have 700 people coming. So we do help all the chapters and the communities which is around uh, around around India as well as outside India today. Right? So we're quite privileged uh, to see a lot of uh, chapters coming up in, uh, in the North region, right? We've got, uh, this is happening uh, CR area, we've got Agile Noida, Agile Chandigarh. Uh, I'm happy to say that something called Agile J Crew is going to come. So it's, it's, it's more is merry. Um, we we do associate with these communities uh, a lot, and I've come from Bangalore only for encouraging the organizers and the volunteers here. So that's one of those uh, kind of key thing which we also get satisfaction when we see this community is discussing about uh, uh, not only about nuts and bolts of it, but also people started trying to use this for. The transforming the way uh, as an individual we are looking at and the way we position ourselves in the organization. Right, so now let me quickly move. I don't have my, um, I didn't carry that, so I need to stand here to transition the slide. So the, 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 the just, uh, you have it? Good, so you can connect that. So quickly, that's fine. So uh, I'll be quickly going through some of those uh, complexity we see in, a, in any large enterprise because when I'm talking about an enterprise, these are the enterprise which are Fortune 100, Fortune 200, right? So, so I would like to know how many of you work in IT service industry here? All, all of them. Any, anyone work in uh, uh, the, the enterprise, means when you say the captives or the... Uh, 
Okay, so what are they? So where do you work? I work for So, so my objective is to, uh, you know, what I what I understood in the last 15, 16 years about because uh, for me all the all the while uh, I had opportunity to be part of large enterprises, and, and uh, Infosys as an organization uh, is also uh, quite uh, uh, engaged with uh, uh, the top 100, 200 kind of clients across the world. So we uh, come under IT services knowledge, uh, which is over a period of time to be gathered. So this group's intention is to help those enterprises to get to next level so that the, the new services is emerging in this space can be consumed by them. So that's one of the predominant uh, objectives through which uh, this group is formed. Right, so, <coughs> all right, in this way. So it, it's, it's a no-brainer. If you take about any enterprise which is existent for the last 15, 20, or 30 years, heterogeneous technologies, uh, nobody can deny about it because they, they have packaged uh, uh, product applications, the off-the-shelf component applications, they got custom-built applications. That's the nature of any enterprise. <clears throat> and if you say any, any large enterprise, uh, it's, it's changing a little bit, but it's, it's predominantly the way in which any large enterprise will be organized is there's a business group, uh, there is an IT group, an IT group itself, there is uh, somebody does development, there's a head for development, there's a head for director for QA, there's a director for support and operations, and that for, um, uh, there are, in fact, I've, I've come across, there are director for specifically for production and operation support. So, and, and each of them will have their own kitty, their own money, their own budget, to really help the business to get what they want. So they, they had their own, uh, it's a federated, most of the enterprises are federated, so it means every one of them had their own independent choice to whom they partner with, what they want to do, and they try to optimize what they can do in their space. So it's a very local optimized. So if you take the testing function of an IT enterprise, they're completely occupied. They have n number of automation initiatives. They've got great initiatives in that particular group, but they never look into what's happening in the upstream and what's happening in the downstream. And, and this is, uh, I, I, I have not seen any enterprise uh, uh, which have not outsourced. Uh, most of the enterprises has got multiple vendors. And as a strategy, they do outsource with multiple vendors. If you say value stream, if you take a bank in the core banking, uh, some part is will be with uh, uh, company A, some other part will be with company B, another part will be company C. Uh, that was a natural choice some time back because uh, the groups were organized like that. So testing is outsourced to, uh, you know, let's say, Mindtree, yeah. development will be with Infosys, and operations will be with IBM of the same product and same application landscape of talking about. And that still holds true. Right? And then we are trying to talk about how do we bring transformation in those uh, application systems, which is solving a business problem. No denial of it, uh, of custom applications, enterprise products, we talked about it. Those are interesting aspects. So this is where most of the CIOs are ripped off. You know, because as I know, in the last two years, I've not seen a single CIO stay, sitting in the chair for more than nine months. The reason is this, simple as that. Right? The business dynamics have changed, and the large enterprises who thought they are safe in their business model is being challenged by a startup, a small, uh, maybe an internet company. Uber is challenging well-established taxi market. Hertz is shivering, right? so, 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 so many. Right? So it's, it's important, uh, enterprises took 15, 20 years to reach a 1 billion, 2 billion, 10 billion. Today, there are companies who are getting into that mark in, in less than two quarters. Right? So that's a reality, we have to accept it, because the way uh, things have changed around us, because the, if you see yourself, right, the, the, the kind of gadgets you use today, the way you consume this work, right? Enterprises exist because you have a problem, right? You have, got, you have to do banking, that's why bank exists. You need insurance, that's why insurance company exists. You need health services, that's why a pharmacy and health, health exist. So the way you consume services and business, it's very different from how our parents consume. Right? How many of us do the same way the banking our parents did? And that is not going to be the same as the next generation is going to do, the consume the services of that. So whoever is trying to resonate with the changing dynamics quickly, they are going to really, really get into the, uh, it's going to change, right? It's going to completely change. Uh, you know, yesterday Mark was talking about, uh, Mark, not Mark, uh, I think the, the TV was talking about 
in Fortune 500, every week at least one, going, one is going out. One company in every, every week, one company is going out and new company is coming in, in, in S&P index of 500. That's a reality. So that's going to aggravate more. So there are big challenges because there's no more differentiation between the business process and IT because the entire business process is done through IT and it's no more executing a proven business model. I want to repeat the word. There's no more executing a proven business model. It's all about discovering new business models. So that's where every enterprises are in today. Right? It's not about just executing existing business. Everyone knows about banking. Everyone knows the value stream of it. But everybody is trying to see Banking is always a, uh, you know, uh, you, you, you give your money to the bank to grow or, or grow your wealth. Today, there are companies who don't have a brick and mortar office making more money in the wealth management than an established bank of the last 100 years. That's a reality. An uh, internet company, uh, they, they call it fintech companies, financial tech companies, right? Financial tech companies make more return on investment by providing wonderful analytic service on where should you keep your money than a bank used to give a service. So bank is losing out a lot in those areas. Right? So because of this IT. So why I bought this is, uh, because of this, the CIOs are in tremendous pressure. They need to bring out, because they have been considered as somebody who can who run the mill. Right? They can run it effectively, efficiently. They have optimized heavy. But the perception generally is the CIOs can't <coughs> really think. They can't innovate. They can't bring new things. They can only renew it. They can only do evolution. They can't do revolution. Right? So that's where the whole perspective of a CIA office is. Right? So that's where um, we'll see how, how, how things are changing and what we're trying to do there. And they're all quite common. IT capacity need to do more with less for more. So this, uh, this, uh, this is, they're already bleeding. Right? The father's cusing will only come blood. If you scrape bottom, only you get blood. Nothing else now. So that's how we today most of the IT. The efficiencies have optimized such a way that anything further you try to optimize it, it will bleed. Right. So, so, so how do we ensure that this is this is this is a reality? A CIO will not get any IT budget. It's a reality. Any IT budget is increasing year on year, but CIO budget is decreasing. It's a contrast. Every IT budget of a large enterprise is increasing at least eight to ten percent year on year. IT budget of enterprises increasing, but CIO budget is reducing 15 to 20 percent year on year. So where is that money going? The support, maintenance, operations. Yeah, that's IT budget. Support, maintenance is IT budget. They, they get. Well, is, is it generally included in CIO budget? Yeah. So I, IT budget is all about you know plan, build, run. That's IT budget, right? Uh, so now, IT budget of an enterprise is increasing, but what CIO is getting is decreasing. So what does it mean? Where the money is going? They are to lean on the the, the enterprise. They, they have the money, but they don't want to spend that. Uh, they, they don't want to waste them. Uh, I, I think you know, just to add on, Sipa, uh, where the money is going is money is going to business. Now business is incubating IT. You no, know, you, you know uh, who is having money to spend today? The CMO, the chief marketing officer. He has got money to try out new things for him. A CMO is spending billions of dollars in analytics than an IT guy is doing. You get what I'm saying? So the, the, it's, 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 a, it's a big big change in the shift of the way the business model is to work. Right? So you have a centralized team called IT or a CIO office where he used to support all the IT initiatives at a consolidated place. But today it, it's, it's going to the, the model in which I, I know my marketing business well. So it's, it's all driven through IT. If I need to bring a new channel of innovation in my marketing, I need to have IT with, with, with me now, not with a central place. Fine. We talked about digital disruption. So digital disruption is a, it's one of those big things that's happening which nobody has a clue how to do with legacy systems. So, so there's no enterprise today of, of 15, 20 years, of 50, more than 50 years of existence. Everyone has got applications doing something. Is of 15 years old, 20 years old, 25 years old, and, and you know, people can't just kill these applications just like that because each of the application is is giving some value uh, or, or the, it is doing some solving some problem. So you can't just throw that away. Uh, this is a challenge. It's it's um, uh, at that same breath today. Everyone would like to bring new things. Say so there's a lot of pressure to bring new things and uh, change existing stuff and run what he's having. 
right? If, if we don't do all, all the three, and today if you take it, you know, it's very clearly evident, this entire money goes only in run. 80% is spent there. To ensure that the existing systems don't break, it don't screw up, and, and it does not lose my existing customers. So that's where the money goes. Right? And change, of course, there are some money getting into change, but new, nobody's thinking about it. Because you don't have bandwidth, you don't have budget, you don't have money to think about it, but business is crazy about it, saying that they want new things. It's fine, the existing things need to run. You need to support the new cha uh, changes which is happening incrementally in my some of the systems. But where are those uh, ideas which is taking me into new business models? Where are those ideas which is getting me into new market segment? Where are those ideas which will attract more customers? So that's where uh, the business is looking upon to IT today. It's, it's an important change in, in which uh, the, uh, the services which IT provide is not enough in the new paradigm. They can't just run and change the existing applications. And they can't do incremental uh, you know, feature addition. They need to be having breakthrough thinking in that. So that's where the challenges of most of the enterprise today. And to add on to it, uh, there's no enterprise. Uh, uh, you, you can't, you know, this, this is a volume. We're not talking about <coughs> 10 applications, or we're not talking about those. It's, it's highly voluminous. <coughs> and, and when I say velocity, it's not about your agile velocity. I'm talking about the real. <coughs> way in which they need to reach into certain uh, uh, places, certain market segment, they want to do experiments. So it's very high now and huge variety. And, and the diversification has become some of those core uh, aspects of most of the business enterprise. So, so now, you know, if you have to really do all this, definitely IT need to support. So what are the questions to a CIO today? Right. If, if a business is asking a question to CIO, are we solving, solving the right problem? Most of CIOs have not reached there. They're, they're figuring it out, how do I solve my existing problem, than, than really looking at uh, how I go to solve the right problem. <clears throat> how I build it fast, and what, in, what business outcome is going to impact. <clears throat> the reason why it's important, most of the IT organizations fundamentally have structured based on the functions. Development, testing, operations, support. And in that particular context, for them, it's more about outputs. I produce quality code, I produce effective testing, I produce uh, excellent SLA management. These are the outputs which these functional units are measured on. Nobody is measured on <clears throat> how, what is your top line, how, much, how many new customers you are able to add because of this initiative, how many new existing customers wallet share I'm going to get because of this new service. If I'm a card service provider, am I, am I cross-selling to my, uh, let us say, to my credit card business? If I'm a credit card business, if I'm a, I'm a transaction guy, am I getting into wealth management and advising? So am I, am I cross leveraging those? So those are not getting measured from an IT perspective because IT was more about executing application building and software. <coughs> but things are getting changed. <coughs> so before getting into some of those aspects, what are some of those ideas, paths which you could really think uh, and going back and when you're having conversations with your, with your peers, with your customer, you know, the, the key thing about any conference is take some spark, go there, and, and build and dwell on those conversations. So if you take about any enterprise, you can classify the applications into three. That's it. There's no more further classifications. We have applications which are money making, applications which are bringing efficiency, and applications which are ensuring compliance. And when I say applications, these applications will be off-the-shelf product, like Siebel's of the world, the SAP's of the world, <clears throat> you know, like your, you know, Amdocs of the world. So there's a lot of products uh, and enterprise products come into picture. There could be some custom built applications also. <coughs> so, it, it, so what are money making applications through which they, see for example, if it's a B2C model, suppose it's an insurance company, you go and buy insurance policy, right? Uh, you can buy a policy online, that's where the digitization happening where you are allowed to buy a policy online and within three clicks of button, you have a policy with you, right? <coughs> and, and that's where those are the money-making applications. For that, you need multiple channels now. You can't just you know, go with uh, the, the web or internet <coughs> uh, channel. You're going to mobile, you're going to different other channels through which you get there. <coughs> so, so it's very important for any enterprise to really look at these money-making applications. If it's a B2B, they have, a, they, have, they have a business users who are doing it. For example, if you take a dealer management system of a large car manufacturer, a dealer is going to put some baton, uh, you know, he's using some systems 
to really carry out its work. And, and, and efficiency driving applications. If you take about an insurance example, there will be a lot of dealers and insurance agents. And the, and the, and the company wants them to be efficient, the way they sell the insurance product. So what are the tools and what are the kind of uh, uh, analytics information can be provided to uh, an agent so that he can sell the, uh, the, the, those policies effectively. So those are the applications, there are a lot of applications towards that, right? Which will help to run the business efficiently. If you take about a, a, a manufacturing company, the, the efficiency is brought through their OEMs, the dealers, the suppliers, who can be efficiently connected so that they, their value chain has been established well. So that is efficiency building applications. Right? So you take about a computer manufacturer like Dell. What is their efficiency applications? Will be their supply chain, will be their CRM, Will be their uh, you know applications which uh, manage their uh, uh, you know OEMs and suppliers. The, the, that those applications will bring efficiency. Because if you don't fo focus on those applications, you can't you can't really get your bottom line well. <coughs> your uh, e-commerce sites could be your uh, you know money making applications. But you need to have this. And ensuring compliance this is where most of those uh, in last uh, one one year I don't know if you observed <coughs> the Europe uh, banking uh, issues. Most of the large banks has been you know, fined with huge, huge, huge penalties. Huge penalties. You know? It's all uh, in billions. Right? The CEO has been getting sacked <coughs> because of those penalties, because of the governance were, were, were compromised or, or it was not done properly. So there are applications towards that. If you take an enterprise, your application falls into this kind of Suppose when you are trying to transform an enterprise. What? Absolutely, yeah, absolutely right. So they are any any enterprise, uh, they, especially when what when they are in Western is, market. What are the key reasons for that? Actually, the European uh, banking segment they have analyzed so much. I think we can we can discuss that. Uh, we can discuss it outside. But just in, in, important thing is one point. Yeah. So for, for the way in which uh, they gave loans to large enterprise. <clears throat> for example, uh, uh, Barclays gave a lot of money to a shipping company without knowing what they would do with the money. And they have become NCAs. For example, NP money is not right. You are not able to prevent yeah. it properly. Yeah. There are laws about it. Tax invasion, you have to prevent it. Absolutely. There are many such things uh, uh, coming there. So just, just to you know, step back, enterprise is complex. The way their structure is complex. And the, the class of applications which you see in enterprise which is solving a business problem can be put into these three categories. I'm sorry. And uh, now look at. Uh, uh, and if you try to visualize a 2 by 2 I wish I had a board. <clears throat> now all these applications can be falling into these three, these three segments. Some are systems of engagements. These, these are the ones which will typically make somebody to come to your place, get your service, ensuring that you are having, and you are not just doing a transaction, you are just doing uh, some emotional attachment and loyalty with your enterprise brand. So there are systems which will drive for that, right? And there are systems of differentiations. These are these are the systems which is <clears throat> which has been uh, like a business process differentiation. If you take about again, I'm taking the Dell example. They had a huge business process differentiation called zero inventory, which was on on, on them, right? It was not an industry uh, thing. So they had a model of you you order a PC based on your order, you you get the systems will go and integrate the, the different uh, channels which can go and assemble your system and, and get to you, right? So they don't buy and stock it. <coughs> Mahindra does that. If you want to buy any Mahindra car today, it's not, it's zero inventory based. You order it, based on your order, your, your car get, uh, because they have a platform, they build on it and they deliver to you. <coughs> what I'm saying, there are differentiations, system of differentiations, <coughs> which will bring a business to differentiate with their competition. There are a lot of systems. There could be industry systems also, standard processes. Systems of records, this we all know about it. This is where most of the enterprise started. They started using IT to manage system of records. Right? That's a, that nobody can deny. That's how they, they, they have some business process, somebody need to automate it. And they have a lot of files coming in, or somebody need to store it somewhere so that it can be retrieved later. So still today, I'm not exaggerating it. We did a quick assessment of one of the largest banks in Europe. You know, if you take they had they had around eight thousand applications in their landscape. Eight zero zero zero. <coughs> Eight thousand applications in the landscape. Okay. You know how many applications fall into systems of engagement? No. 
they are eight. And you know they have almost 7,000 applications falling in systems of records. So it doesn't reach, reach them anywhere now, right? Because you, if you want to really make innovative banking, what do you want to do? You, you want to, but is that important? System of records is important? It's important, very important. You can't just take that away. <coughs> System of differentiation, is that important? It's important. But where, where the money is now? Where, where is the future is? Systems of engagement. Systems of engagement. Right. So this is where, you know, sometimes in, in the name of agile, in the name of all of the things, we miss the game of what a business is trying to do, right? And where we can help the business, right? If there is no business, whatever that mean, you know, whatever that you do, it remains as a doing unless and until you mean some outcome from it. So, so if you try to look at any transformation, or if, I mean, for example, you are an agile coach, or you are whatever the role you play. Try to understand the applications that the product you're supporting is what? Whether it is a money-making product, or whether it is a product which brings differentiation, or a pro <coughs> product which is managing system of records, because the treatment is different. You don't want to bring a, a super agility in system of records, because that's not going to change. It's not going to change. Suppose you, 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 you can, can you do agile there? Yeah, do agile, but does it bring any value? It may not. <coughs> if you do, and agile in your system of differentiation, it brings a lot of value because it does a lot of change management. <coughs> does agile work for systems of engagement? <coughs> but I say no. You need to think something else. Let's see. You need to think something else, right? Does agile helps you in system of differentiation because it, it, it brings incremental changes. Does agile help you to do a revolutionary thinking and bringing new products? That's where systems of engagements are, right? Systems of records. Which is all known, <coughs> right? So, so the if you look at any system, so the impediments and opportunities are different for the given system. <coughs> the, the impediments which you have in system of records will be very different from the kind of impediments that you have for for a systems of engagement or for system for records. The reality is that. <coughs> so, I invite you when you get into uh, in your workplace. This is a quite common, uh, you know, knowledge of body of knowledge which everyone knows. It's called value stream mapping. It doesn't take much time. There are lots of tools available in the internet. You just Google around it, you get things. You just try to understand what is the value stream which you're working on. And the value stream differ extremely whether you are whether you are supporting a system of records or systems of engagement or systems of you know uh, differentiation. And based on that, you need to understand <coughs> where is that what you know you can so so blindly getting into doing something will give you a perspective on where you need to invest and what treatment you need to do. <coughs> you know, Mark is there, I, 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 uh, you know, uh, he's my good friend. So, so it's not about just the patterns and the framework, right? It, it is there, it, we all need that, but that is not the end. And, and we should not do a transformation just because, uh, you know, we want to do this. I have seen many, many of uh, our clients because of <coughs> Their distress, their pressure. They say, "Hey, we want to transform into safe." Is that your objective? Don't reach anywhere. You know, today safe will come. Tomorrow something else is there. So that's not your objective. Your objective is what? Either helping me in becoming efficient in my systems of engagement, be making me efficient in my system of records, managing my system of records, and so on and so forth. So all these frameworks, all these methodologies, all these patterns are required to start something, right? So it was it's a starting point for us. But that's not the end. That's just a means to achieve something. <coughs> so now what you do is, uh, the, the, since, since the title is on shaking and moving, we'll see what is that we need to shake in these one, two, three. What is that we need to shake in one? What is that we need to move in two? What is that we need to another shake and move in three? So those are my perspectives, my views. I think it really works, right? If you, if you look at if you are able to at least classify, you know, there is no hard and thumb rule, you know, hard rule and carved in stone. These are the ten things which will categorize uh, into you know these systems. It's based on the perceptions, based on the value which is given. <coughs> right. <coughs> the systems of records. What is that? It's, it's quite clear, right? It's it's just uh, it maintain <coughs> the master data of the organization, which are the, which are the data. Which has been over a period of time. You can't just ignore it. It's very important for you. It's very critical for you. Most of your <coughs> compliance issues start from here. 
there are organizational compliance issues in spe specifically in certain states in US. The data center need to be in that particular state. You can't, you can't have the data center outside the particular state. For example, I'm just making an IT example. <coughs> so, 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 what's what's the focus here? The focus is they have so much of issues in the production. The biggest challenge of a CIO in system of records is how do we ensure that the number of incidents which is there in the production can be reduced significantly? Because he's, <coughs> he's, he bleeds here. Because you can't you can't compromise with a, a, a data integrity issue. So you can't sit on to any issues which is related to system of record for long. But <clears throat> the reality is the maximum number of issues you get is from here because this is the oldest set of applications which an enterprise will have. Because this this built over a period of last 25, 30 years. <clears throat> Today somebody need to go and fix an issue. He don't know where to start, where to touch. Because there is, there is no maintainability of my code. There's nothing. <clears throat> it's absolutely a, a big mess that I'm, I'm, I'm looking into. So it's, this is where <clears throat> IT service industry make money. <clears throat> Most of the IT service industry, the 60% of business come from this. Providing sustenance of system of records applications. So it is required. And this is not, not it's critical, <clears throat> but it's, it's among us. It's, it's uh, monolithic. It's, it requires a lot of manpower really to do this. That's why the outsourcing happens. <clears throat> So who will help you to move here? Suppose you want to bring a transformation in these set of uh, portfolios. Your developers and testers, of course, will <clears throat> will be the first guys to get into this uh, change because they always feel that if you take any, in fact, an Infosys I know, <clears throat> if you take any guys coming out from the fresh uh, from our Mysore training camp, <clears throat> if, if we put them into a, a support and a maintenance project, the fellow will leave in one year. <clears throat> Because nobody wants to get associated themselves with something which is not exciting. Something which is just managing records and supporting a current operation. It's not, not exciting. But the reality is, that's where most of the people, 90% of the freshers will be pulled into those systems. Right? But tremendous learning, they are ready to get into new things. Suppose you give them with, <coughs> you empower them, you enable them, you see they do magic. So all your basic agility stuff, you need to bring some of, some of the empowering and enabling those people. <clears throat> so who will be biggest bottlenecks there? Who, who will shake this whole transformation initiatives or your release managers, your program managers, because they get antagonized because of automation. For example, <clears throat> the biggest investment most of the enterprise today are doing is buying small automation companies. For example, Infosys bought a company called Panaya. <clears throat> exactly doing this product. <clears throat> Solving this particular problem. Automating <coughs> mundane daily job, which is 25 things somebody needs to do every day morning to do a configuration. Panaya. Panaya. -A -A. So what does it do? It does uh, take <coughs> any changes into IT related changes, right? <coughs> in, in, in SAP world especially. It helps you to do that. And because most of those uh, systems of records will be cost products. It will be either your Siebel's or SAP's or your, <coughs> your chart systems or any capital management systems will be in this. And you are seeing, so what I am trying to bring a perspective is, if you are, you are working on an application which is falling into this particular category, <coughs> if you want to bring transformation and changes, these are the perspectives you have to have it. Right? If, if, you, if you don't consider the guys who try to shake your change management program, and you don't achieve uh, any success there. So how do we ensure that you bring all of them, uh, you know, in, in, into into the game is the important thing, right? So, so any any, any <coughs> because I'm just rushing through because I know we need to complete it quickly because uh, each of each of those one slide I can spend two three hours. And, and the, the, the important aspect about it is take some of these clues and see that you reflect yourself. What what applications you work on today? What about the role you are playing? <coughs> Suppose you take system of differentiation. So only on that one, uh, you can give one or two examples each, so that you can be great. Systems of records? Yeah. A simple example is your HR data system. Now I'll employ your records. It's the best example of system of records. 
<coughs> you are, say for example, you work in a company where you are, you are, you are making a travel request. They make a travel request, <coughs> so you give some information, it validates with something and it gets into some workflow. Somebody approves it, somebody reviews it, somebody <coughs> gives you a ticket. That's, that's basically, it falls under this category. Just about for cops. Which, which does not do anything, which, we just look into, <coughs> take some input from a user, that's a data validation, whether you belong to that uh, group, <coughs> and that's some action, nothing else. And does it change frequently? It doesn't change frequency. If, if somebody wants to apply Agile here, I say <coughs> this is the least set of applications you should apply Agile. There's no, no value for return of value <coughs> because it doesn't change much. Planning system. If the planning system is going to change frequently, it's a problem of the company. Right? It doesn't change that frequent. <coughs> How many times your performance appraisal systems change? It doesn't change much, right? So those are the systems on the cards. <coughs> applications that can help uh, convert it automatically. Mm. Let us say the average system or the HR system. Those are system of records. System. And 80% of systems of records are <coughs> are cards. When I say cards, component of the shelf. Because it's a it's a no nothing is unknown there, right? It's all known problems. Nothing is unknown. So there's nothing innovation there. <coughs> but if you want to bring a transformation efficiency, because a lot of money you can save. People bleed here. If you look at in any IT enterprise, the first place I look at is this because low hanging fruits. You know, you can, you, if you are a consultant, your big bet is in first month how much saving you are bringing. So if I have to touch, I will touch this first. Because you can see so much of inefficiencies built over a period of time. <coughs> you can go and, a small little automation of your test cases will at least bring 15-20% of saving. So this, this is, this is, is this risky? <coughs> it is not that great risky. <coughs> Those systems of record we see, what we saw. System of differentiations, this is important. This is still very, very <coughs> like, this is more of an evolution. See, more, more of the business process <coughs> evolve over a period of time. <coughs> my policies change, but small new features getting added into systems. It is fall into this categories. So any other <coughs> applications which you support your business process. If you are a bank, how do core banking system will fall here. If I'm an insurance company, my entire insurance dealer management, insurance agent management, all these systems fall into. <coughs> what does it mean? It is it is it can do incremental changes. It can do it can it can even bring um, a certain new experience to a user. It's a very important system. So if somebody has to apply Agile, I'll consider these systems. So it's a great candidate for it. <coughs> because there's high desirability for it, and it is feasible and viable also. In the case of the first example of system of records, even though there could be desirability, the viability and feasibility is very less. There's a huge humongous systems which are not existing today, nobody gives support, <coughs> there's no point in getting that. So, so here, it's very interesting thing is, Upskill. If you go to previous slide, you know it's more about reskilling and upskilling people. You have to reskill them because managers need to get acquainted with new tools, new way of working, reskilling. <coughs> but you see here, it's more about upskilling because we are assume that people have certain skills, so they need to get upskilled, they need to be cross skilled. <coughs> so who are the biggest bottlenecks for you here? So this is this is the place where you have got functional silos. Testing department will say they are doing excellent job. We have got. 85% automation in last three quarters. Kudos, they all get uh, you know, appreciation letters. Operations will say in last two months, we reduced P1 issues by 25%. Development will say we improved our velocity by 25%. <coughs> what does it mean? What? Does it mean, any, mean anything? It doesn't result in anything. Right? <coughs> so that's the problem here. The biggest problem is those functional heads. So how do we have a contract with them? <coughs> how do we have a, well, this is very important. Uh, it's a, a, any, any organization today, at least they're floating because of this. They're floating. The, the, the banks are making loss, but still they're floating because of these applications. Because this is at least serving their existing customer. See, for example, ICSA Bank <coughs> is adding a small, little, nice, you know, fl flashy UI or giving a new experience of your widget when you get in. Those are these things. Which is not a fundamental change in the way they do banking. The banking is done the same way, but 
but little flashy stuff is added here there. The customer is attracted more. Uh, the stickiness of the customer will be high. But nothing changed. Your basic fundamental models of doing business remains the same. Savings bank is savings bank. But they will tell you, hey, you can get your account balance through your mobile. Or you will say that <coughs> you will get an alert when something happens. So nothing changed significant over there. Right? <coughs> so those set of systems here. Because this is very huge. If you take any large enterprise, <coughs> this, this space is very attractive. And, and this is uh, a space probably most of us will be. If, if, you, if, you, if you reflect yourself, the applications which you are supporting today or where you are working, most of them will be there. Right, let's move on. This is, this is the place in next two years, <coughs> the fundamental change, the fundamental change is going to happen. The fundamental change is going to happen in this space. And this is a space where nobody has got any clue, the IT does, does not have any clue at all how to do this. The CIO does not understand the space. He is quite happy with managing system of records and systems of differentiation. And he feels system of differentiation is innovation. But that's wrong. You don't do any innovation there. And it's just, just about you make, making small changes. <coughs> so now who are the big bottlenecks you tell me here? Most of us. The scrum masters, agile coaches, these are the guys who are not allowed, because they are quite happy in managing system of differentiations. Well, some change management, some new things are coming, but <coughs> where is the innovation? How we are helping business to think about a new business model? Are we doing here? I doubt. <coughs> So according to me, in next two years, when we come and meet another conference, I think we, 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 today we are discussing on this system of differentiation. All agile frameworks, processes, methodologies, all those deliberations are all happening here. And still people are getting into this wave, right? I, I don't blame. <coughs> still people are getting stepping stones in doing transformation in this space. But this is, if you have to really bet yourself, if you have to reskill yourself, you have to upskill yourself, I, I invite you to do in this space. So this is this is more about your digital leadership. It's more about co-creation with your customers. So 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 it's it's all about. <coughs> the, there's no differentiation between the users, the business, and the IT. Because they all need to come together to see what is required for a particular customer. Fine. Right, so <coughs> what we'll do is I, I don't want to spend much time here. So very important thing. So there are a few patterns which you can really look at. So I'll just put the numbers over there. You can consider for that. So your number one is what? This is number one of innovation. The tools are the patterns which you can think about for how can we transform the one, two, three easier. If you have not heard about it, or if you have already, if you know about it, <coughs> great. And this is where one of the key, <coughs> I can say pattern which will help you to bring systems of engagements. Design thinking has been, uh, been discussed in most of the enterprise circles today, but it is in a small place. <coughs> but this is going to emerge in the next two, three years. What does it mean? Quite simple. How do how do you have how do you empathize with your end customers and look at desirability, viability, and feasibility? And and the theme is instead of building the product right, are we building the right product? And ensuring that <coughs> the customer is involved upfront. And, and ensuring a system is built to engage him <coughs> so that his way of interacting with an enterprise changes. If you don't do it, somebody else will do it. Simple as that. If to, tomorrow, let us say, Barclays don't do it, some you know, fintech company will do it. And, 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 and I'm not uh, you know, making again exaggeration here. You will see most of the large enterprises in the space of banking, insurance, this all will get either get perished or they will get bankrupt. You know, the kind of losses they're making is huge. And, and the way, <coughs> the reason why which you and me, uh, are the way you do banking, our children will not do that way. It's going to completely change the way we consume services, not for the bank, we talk about anything. <coughs> Orchestration of implement value stream, this will help you in your uh, systems of differentiation. So you, have, you should understand what value stream you're looking into. So this is another pattern. Which is, which is there from quite some time. So BSM, use BSM to get understand your pattern. <coughs> Speed with quality, we all know about. This is where the agile, your shift left, your automation, your continuous integration, all continuous delivery, all those aspects come into this space. So where you can help your three and two. So some, some amount of system of records you can save 
and bleeding money, and some more new changes can be brought quickly into your second set of systems. Another important thing, if you have not thought about it, please think about it. Today, analytics is being used heavily in business. As a CMO, I know where should I do my advertisement? Where should I put my money? But IT is sitting on tremendous data. You know, IT is sitting on tremendous data. You say that the defect data, the incident data, <coughs> your production data, your code quality data. So a lot of information is there. But nobody is trying to look at the information and do analytics. <coughs> if, if we ask you, what should be your unit test automation coverage? What should be your unit test automation coverage? Whether it is 50%, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, what should be your percentage? Because today we take a thumb rule, right? Does it make sense? I've got my 60% unit test automation. Whether if I make it 90%, whether I get my right business value. So where do I get decision? Look into this analytics. So today, analytics as a space have emerged effectively in the business. So you need to look into the IT. So those are the key patterns which are going to emerge. <clears throat> in next two years, when we speak again, when we meet again, we know most of us will be talking about this. Because IT is sitting on tremendous. From a run space, it's quite uh, incident data, your support data, ticket data, all available. But in the plan and build, because of the application lifecycle management systems, your JIRAs and your TFS and all these are building out data. Today. So this has become, and this will help you entry. This will not help your. My question is, let's uh, say there are three factors in uh, system of innovation, desirability, viability, and feasibility. Yes. Based on the need to keep uh, uh, look uh, for the changing behavior of the customer, how uh, they, uh, they, uh, their desires are getting changed with their production service. So you are saying that uh, uh, IT analytics. So I think this can help. This, this can be even. Yeah. <clears throat> so I, IT analytics, it will bring the efficiency of where you operate your IT machine. Okay. But it does not tell you whether I need to have this feature or I need to have this feature. Which, which, where is the desirability? How to analyze yeah. so that desirability? Because we are developing our uh, products and services based on the, these, these three factors. Yeah. So uh, there should be a mechanism to analyze. Yeah, yeah I, I take your point. For example, there is an application which is in production. I know customer, I'm done. I know customer where they spend their more eyeballs, right? Where they, where they, which features they don't use. So for example, if I have, so, so as, a, as, a, as a product owner, so today do you know whether to fix this issue or build this new feature, which has got economic sense? <coughs> How do I know? I can look into this uh, analytics data for the production, which I know, hey, this feature, no customer have used in the last six months. So why should I put my money in fixing the issue there? Then I, I should better building something new or I have a new change. I just stop here. And this is another, I think, see, what I have intention, I told you very clearly. Intention is to throw you some patterns, some, some little sparks, so you can reflect yourself in your space, right? So this is another important thing. You know, your, today, IT CAO's budget, <coughs> even though it's, it's getting shrinked, it's almost, a, see, if you take a large enterprise, it's more than a billion dollar, right? If you don't, you're supporting, providing IT to your business. If you don't have your own IT to manage your business, it's a big, big uh, you know, challenge. So what I would say is, this is another pattern which lemurs. So there is a lot. Of, see, today, uh, youngsters come and ask me, what do I focus on in my future IT? According to me, these are three things. IT analytics, IT for IT, design thinking. These are, these are areas where most of the aspects will happen in the IT as a world to support your system of differentiation, system of records, and system of innovation. So I stop here. I understand I overshoot time. Let's, uh, I'm sorry for the next speaker, so. So any questions uh, or, or, or any comments, uh, welcome. Uh, you can reach out to me. Uh, I do tweet a lot. So Pras, P-R-A-S underscore India is my handle. <coughs> Hope I did made some sense to you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Prasad. Uh, I would like to request you, uh, Prasad. Small uh, token of appreciation from our side. Thanks for sharing your knowledge and experience.